Hello and welcome. What I have hanging here is a 99 four-stroke Avenue 9.9 .9 horsepower outboard. Now, full disclosure, this will probably be the last four-stroke video I make for quite some time. Um, reason being is this is the last one I have. So that, uh, yeah, they're not easy to come by. Now, I know a lot of people don't like these motors, but so far in my experience, they've they've been fine. You know, they're easy enough to fix. I mean, the timing and the throttle advance and all that stuff that you got to worry about on a two-stroke just doesn't exist on these things. So they're easy to work on, and you know they run decent. Yeah, they're a little a little a little vibrating, but once you get past that, you know they're they're fine motors. But what I really really like about them is how quickly they sell. You know, you, let's say you're trying to sell a 9.9 .9 or a 15 for, you know, five to 700 bucks, you know, runs good, gone through, reliable, etc. It'll sit for a week, two, three, four, before it sells. This thing, hours. I don't know why. People just see four stroke, 9.9, .9, Evernerd, popular motor, four stroke, gimme. Uh, this one, I don't know how good it's gonna be. We're going to find out. I do have the other motor that somebody was robbing parts off of. It's basically just a power head and... I don't know, it's got some parts, but mostly it's just a power head. Anywho, uh, I just fixed the transom clamps so they exist again. So I'll get it on the bench, get it apart, and quickly see what we're dealing with. Now this one wasn't originally fixed because... Well, I broke the dipstick, but you can see how melty it is. You can see right here the oil fill cap, how it's a little oblonged. That's because that melted down as well. So I was a little concerned with it having overheated. The thing is the, uh, I mean, there's no doubt it probably got warm. The problem is you don't know if, because you know, I bought a whole bunch of these things. If these parts were off another motor and then just got put on here. Or if this motor is melted down, I, who knows? But there's no paint flaking off, there's no burnt, there's no melted anything else. If not for these two items, I wouldn't suspect that. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ignore it, but I'm not gonna rule out this motor not you know being a bad motor because it overheated. It just it's something to keep in mind. So I wanted to blow her off. Got to remember how to do that. I think that's the little clip right inside of here for the shift rod. I think that comes up or something. I don't remember. Like that, which should release the shift rod, which it did. Propeller is loose on the shaft factory propeller so I don't know how that happens more in bushing I suppose we have a tiny not factory or correct size cotter pin move that And there she is. I forgot about the ample use of torques on these things. So this is the choke cable. Uh, pretty much anything you want to do to these is going to be tremendously easier if you get these little cowlings off. So that's what I'm doing. There's another one of those weird clips. Well. It's right here. Anyway, take that off of the shift handle. There, pop the bolt off of the shift handle. So, the shift handle and the choke's disconnected. We can unbolt the torques that hold on the lower cowlings. There's a bunch of them. Huh. 
Uh, looks like an 8 or a 10 mil. Holding the tops together by the latch handles. Yeah, right there. It's, a, it's an 8 if you're curious. The connector is going to come off. I learned on the last motor that they got a bolt hiding down here, and the only way to access it is through this tube. And that tube is extremely difficult to get back on. But it's got to happen. I don't remember if it took out the grommet or not. Probably did. Getting that screw in, I think, is going to be the next hardest thing about this. It ain't easy. All right, let's get those out of there. Spark plugs look clean enough. No burning. Yeah, yep. no oil in there. These are a top dead center finding screwdriver. Oops. All right, screw it. Let's try out the beaver. <laughs> beaver. Beaver. Bore scope. Nice cross hatching on the cylinder walls. Mm, I don't really see anything wrong. Yeah, that looks like pretty clean. Cylinder wall. Looks like the low oil pressure switch is disconnected. <sighs> don't think that was for the low oil though. I think that was for the uh, stop switch that is no longer in the tiller handle. So we'll have to address that in a little bit. But right now, it's going to keep us from, you know, working on this thing is the lack of a coil. So, luckily I have one off the motor. I'm going to go rob it off there. All right. Nice looking coil. We do have some cracking, but we don't necessarily have a blowout yet to where we have a little hole or something that's going to leak. It might work. It might not. Uh, that's, that's about as best as I can guess. So, we'll hook up the wire. Coil back in there and see what happens. Yeah, we just gotta figure out which one's top and bottom. That's a joke, it doesn't actually matter. If you notice, we only got one wire going to the coil telling it when to fire, because it fires both. And whatever cylinder has compression and fuel, that's which one fires. Otherwise, both plugs fire at the exact same time. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, spark. But I also hear sparking on the other side. Let's hope nothing to be concerned with. Fingers crossed. Okay, got some used dipsticks on it. A little drain fill plug, which doesn't thread as nicely as the bent up melted one. But my experience thus far with these things, those threads always suck. Found some old motor oil. Probably new. Doesn't look new. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody save an old used motor oil. Yeah, it's better.
Gonna use my ball socket crowbar, get this off. All right, off with the starter. So I want to get the carburetor off and start getting that clean. And I have it. Yeah, that, that sucks doing that. Alright, zip ties. We'll see you later. If you're wondering, yes, those actually are supposed to be there. Split hose. All right, get this off. We don't have a plastic fitting, meaning we can get to the top of the hose and use our diagonal wire cutters to slide the hose off. That way, we don't have to replace this hose every time because this is like two feet long, two and a half feet long, and at nine bucks a foot, if you don't have to buy three feet of hose, you're doing good. All right, we have a special tool addition for this job. It is a flange nut wrench, 342211, part number. Very cheap tool if you want to go buy one. I think it's like 12 bucks. They used to be a custom-made wrench. I think it was an SK wrench. They don't do that anymore. Now they just put in a Craftsman odd wrench, 10 millimeter, uh, Craftsman 42348. Now, when you see the pictures of these things on... Oh, Cali Marine, I believe, they photographed it that way. That way they could still sell you a $6 wrench for almost 12 bucks. Had they done it this way, ain't nobody going to buy the special revenue tool because it's not a special revenue tool anymore. It's just a standard wrench. Anyway. So yeah, that's what's going on there. Now it's, it's a, I think it's a condition wrench. So I mean, you're not just, they're not just falling out of the sky, but they're, uh, they're out there. All right, get this roller off. All right, that tiller handle doesn't work at all. What's going on here? Yeah, whatever. Advanced it forward. Now you only need this stupid wrench for this back bolt. This is the runner up to the hardest part of this job. Because without, if this flywheel wasn't on, it'd be easy. But if you're trying to do it with the flywheel on, it's a pain. And I'm going the wrong way. Anyway, what you should do is heat it up with a torch. And then bend this thing back a little bit. Although, do I really need a torch to do it? Dumbest place for a nut. It's not, I mean, it's fine, I guess. But you just can't get to it. All right, let's do this. Looks like it's set right, though. Float sticks a little, just like the last ones, but some fresh fuel in there, that should be fine. A little bit of something building up, a little bit of stuff in the bottom, so it's probably better we took this apart. Yeah, that's probably all. All right. Time to soak. All 
All right, we're at the tiller handle now. It uh, it does work. The thing is, it's missing its base cap, so it's nothing to hold down this little cable trunnion. Pretty sure I robbed all that out of there. But anyway, I'm gonna pop it off there. I don't know. I could fix the handle itself. Let me go get the other one off first. All right, this is the other tiller handle. The idle just screw is still there. Twist grip is in good shape. Lettering's okay, but it's okay on the other one. Stop switch knob is broken, but I covered that in the last video how to fix that. Now you just go on eBay and order one of the little repair kits. Uh, let's test the switch. All right, I have a ASARC digital meter. Uh, I don't use this very often because it's slow. It's auto figure out what you want to do. So it takes a second compared to my Cantec or a Fluke, whatever it is. Well, that was easy. So it appears the stop switch is working, which changes everything. Because right now it's receiving a stop signal from the switch. In which case, we're using it. So let's make sure this thing is going to work. So we got uh, that's going on there. Oh, it does work. Well, that changes a lot. All right, the last video I had, I also showed replacing that button, so I don't need to go too much into it. So, in the interest of time, I might speed through it, but. We'll see how long this takes. It's only a second, I'll leave it in. If I run into hiccups, it's coming right out of there. So there's a, uh, a little clamp down inside of there that holds the cable taunt. Not cable, but the wiring and button and all that stuff. So it's a little, it's a little tricky to do this without taking that zip tie off. And if you take that zip tie off, you know, you should put it back in. And that's a pain, so it's easier to just work around the zip tie. So there is our broken button. There's our new one, our new spring. Another quick test. Okay, nothing. Good. Pull the switch. Perfect. So we have a functioning tiller handle again. Pull this button. So we should have just enough wire here. Put a new terminal in and plug it into the plug without having to splice in more wire. I hope anyway. We'll find out in a minute. What the heck was that? Just a washer that goes in from behind. But it's thick, so we can't lose it. Now with the old. And let's see, same age, but slightly better. Okay, I have that clamp still. And I need to take the ball socket off the end. I actually just found up finding a spare. Compare the old to the new. There's actually a measurement for this too, but I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna 
match up to the old one. Should be right around there somewhere. stop switch because yeah got that right right in there if you hold the wire just right and get lucky you can get it in without the tool but I'm not getting lucky tool is I don't know lettering wear off anyway so we can use that to push in the terminal be right there. Yeah, it looks good. All right, I was given a uh, desk lamp from uh, Chari Jod. Figured I would uh, put it up there on top of my toolbox when I want to light up this area better. I noticed on the side of the box, you know, black rechargeable color switch, touch switch. Double key, wireless charging, and I have a uh, pen container, color switch, and black. That's the options that this came with. I want one that has, well, I'd rather have silver, but all of these checked. How neat would that be? Hey. Anyway. So, yeah, that's uh, one of those. I started accepting vendor stuff just because. But the only speculation is uh, no strings attached. So, they said, you want it? There you, can. Here you go. Cool. All right. No USB charger. Or adapter. So let me grab one of those. Ooh, it has USB-C though. So I use this on my phone. As I make more and more YouTube videos, more and more lighting products turn out to be quite handy. So that, uh, that works. Anything lights up the work area better for you. You know, it's a win-win. Let's see. Uh, eh. Not too shabby. Really is more of a computer lamp. It's probably where it'll go. Anywho. Carburetor is apart. Let's get it. Well... Clean dish. We still got some muckets inside of there, so I'm gonna pop the float off, clean that up. The uh Float level looks looks pretty good. It looks like it might be up just a little bit, but I mean it's kind of where it's resting because there's it's pretty nice. But we can check the level with the, one of my float gauges. Now I need a hand to push the camera to focus. Right there. There we go. Anyway, it's just you can tell it's just. Just perfect. It slides right under there. Check how parallel it is. We're a little off, but I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to fix that because it's it's real close. So yeah, we'll go with it's fine. It looks pretty good. I found this screwdriver in high school. They were uh, eliminating the wood shop. So they were removing all of the lockers, removing all the machinery, tools, the storage area. They, it's, I mean, looking back on it, they were making the kids do all the work <laughs> during the class, which, I mean, it's kind of like digging your own grave, you know. But they basically got away from any type of power tool and just went to hand tools and lockers were already 86 by that point and here it is all the years years later 
I still have it. It's, it's probably my go-to screwdriver for these carburetor bowls. Okay, top tone now. Let's put that there. Let's see if the lighting changes are any different in the video. No, not really. I guess just the brightest one there is probably where we want to be. Check the gaskets, make sure they're okay. Both the front and the one behind the insulator, they all look fine, not torn, so I don't think I need to replace them, even though I should. I still have one. I don't feel like cutting one. But if this doesn't work or leaks or idles weird, I'll definitely be making one. But for now, I'm going to roll with it the way it is. I'm going to fight trying to get that back one on there. This is going to suck, by the way. And I already dropped it. Don't want to replace the hose. So I'm going to do a little repair to it, a little sleeve. It being a breather hose, I don't really care. If this is a fuel line, I need to get them changed. But we can make our breather hose as good as new-ish. A little piece of heat shrink tubing. Now, I would usually use adhesive line here. However, I do not have any. Probably order some, but for now, this will work. Yeah, see? Perfect. You guys doubted me. Let's get the pull starter back on. Okay, let's pump some fuel into it. All right. Should start, I think. We'll find out. So we're probably gonna clean and rebuild the starter on this one. All right, let's try again. Choke. You piece of. Well, we choked it twice, so we should have should have a little bit of fuel prime. Uh, started. See, the problem is right here, this spring. It's a little bent up. Tried bending it back and putting it in there, and uh, clearly didn't work. Okay, I figured out the problem. Here's the spring. It's a little bit bent up. Here's another spring that I borrowed off my 8 horse, and it's nearly identical. Uh, I'm... Part of me thought that somebody tried to bend the 8 horse to fit, but that's that's not the case. They just, I don't know, this thing just grabbed something and got bent. It's, it ain't going to work. I need to get a new one. And n nothing I can do. Just wait for a new one to arrive. But it did fire up for a second. So, you know, it's got that going for it. We'll have to fix this later going to put it in here for now just to hold it together and continue working on it. The one I uh, just ordered should be here in two days, so looks like this video won't be go up, going up today, but you know, at least the parts are on their way. Yeah, see, see how bent that is? That ain't going to work. Okay, got a lower unit somewhere in here. There it is, on the floor. I keep all my good stuff. 
Is it any good? Don't know. Is it leak oil? Probably. So let's find out. Alright, got some nice finger tight screws. Every other engine I got out of this lot, they drain the lower. And given how easy that screw came out and how loose that was, probably the same thing here. Okay, got my Stevens pressure tester. The vacuum tester is still broken, and I still haven't pried open the wallet to buy a replacement. So we'll just do a pressure test on it, which basically means we pump it up and see if it holds pressure. If it does, I'll probably keep the water out and oil in. PSI, no issues. 15 PSI, no issues. We've got about 17. A couple of turns of stuff. All right, well, go eat lunch, see if that gauge moves. All right, it's been a little while, but <clears throat> back at it. Haven't dropped any pressure at all, so I'd say our gear case is A-OK. -okay. Now, turning this, it feels a little stiff, almost like it's got brand new bearings. We know it doesn't. So it's either got real low hours or it's in dire need of some more. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. Start it, run it. See how it does, take it you know, out of the test tank and spin it, see if it's looser. I don't know, we'll see what happens. All right, I would like to get a look at the water pump. Housing itself looks like it's in great shape. A little tighter than I'd imagine. Well, it turns out I don't have a grommet, so I'm going to get one of those ordered. But I don't want that to hold up the shell. So, and I'll probably just order a whole pump kit, put it in. At least the next buyer will know it has a new pump kit. I don't know, that or else I could just sell it, you know, buy a new water pump kit. Save the effort. Because it's not, I mean, sadly, it's like let's say you're buying a car or trying to sell a car. You can go put new tires on it, you know, spend a couple hundred bucks on that. But those new tires, they're not going to get you a couple hundred dollars more for your old used car. Does that make sense? So if I say it needs water pump, 500 bucks, I'll get 500 bucks for it. If I say brand new water pump, 600 bucks, I'll get 500 bucks for it. <laughs> so, it, I, don't know. I don't know. I might just buy a grommet depending on how well this works. Or like I said, just tell the buyer, buy a water pump. We'll see. All right, let's get this thing in there. Okay, got the hardware cleaned up. Put some of the gasket compound onto the screws. Prevent seizing. All right, time to clean up the housing. The, uh... This looked like this when I started. I put some lime away on it, which apparently is lime calcium rust, not to be confused with calcium lime rust. That's different stuff. This is lime away. It does lime calcium then rust. Important difference. Anyway, that's the gel kind. It seemed to work, but I think I'll try the Sprite foamy kind first. I mean, it gets it right off for the most part. I kind of wish that I just did this or tried this first 
when I was working on the other motor. And then that eight horse, oh, that is eight horse. That was hard to clean up. But this, this is making it a breeze. I must say, I'm quite pleased with how well that uh, lime calcium rust away stuff worked. Worked great. I wish I had done that in the other engines. But here we are. Uh, I didn't expect this one to come out so nice. I expected me to have to use sandpaper to get it nice. So I picked up some uh, touch-up paint. It looks good enough, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch it up anyway. I got the intake screens moved as well as the anode. So I'm going to paint, well, one side, rotate. Touch up paint the other side and call it good. I'm only going to do from like here down. Ooh, hey, it is looking good. It's just about dry. Let me take the tape off here. If you're going to uh, do some touch up paint, I really recommend masking off the screws and anything that isn't, you know, the housing. Ignoring these, of course. Unless you're going to paint it off, you know, not attached, then cool. Anyway, the uh, reason being is it doesn't look like you uh, cut any corners on it. You know, it looked like you did a great paint job. It's the uh, ones where, you, you know, you'll see an engine for sale and the whole thing's been painted, propeller and all. And, you know, the stand that it's sitting on is painted as well. It's obvious that, it, you know, it used to look like that and then somebody threw some paint on it. By doing, I think, that... You know, it just goes a little bit extra effort to show you care. All right, intake screen and anode is back on. So now we can get the side covers on. First thing you want to do is get this lower bolt in that little hole. You know what absolutely sucks? <laughs> All that work to get this back in. And I didn't notice we didn't have a hood latch. You ain't getting it in without that, or with it on there. Oh, look. All right, maybe I am changing that hose, huh? Anyway, back off. Okay, with the pan back on, it's time to get the propeller back on. So let's do that. We have an adapter thing. I believe it goes in that way. Probably mistaken. That way, I mean. Uh, let's find some grease. All right, for the propeller, I'm not gonna go with one of the older styles, like one with the covering ring, because I think at this point in time, those were kind of gone. So I'm gonna go with one of the uh, aftermarket Michelins with no covering ring, kind of give it a slightly more modern look. Okay, that's on. The lower looks nice, the rest of the motor not so much. But I mean, it was opposite before we started, so. Well, needs a hood now, but get it off the uh, desk first and onto a engine stand with wheels, then put the hood on. Okay, spring has arrived. This came from, it's a boat salvage place out in uh, Pasadena, sells things on eBay. Uh, he's got a lot of new parts. I think what he does is goes to buy closing or dealerships that are getting out of Evernerd stuff and they buy up their inventory and then he sells it on eBay. Uh, the guy is a genius because he's got a whole bunch of these springs. So he sells them as a quantity of five. For the same price as the people that's selling a quantity of one. So obviously, you know, you're going to buy the quantity of five for the same price. The thing is, I'm never going to need five of these. I never thought I was going to need one of these. <laughs> so... It's a way to get rid of the junk that I think, I mean, it's not junk, but the crap that he's usually not going to sell. And a way to entice the buyers to buy his stuff instead of another seller's. It's a, it's a good idea. I've actually met him before. Um, every now and then I, you know, I'd be looking around the garage thinking, why do I have all this junk? And then I list it for sale and he's coming, he's buying. And he just doesn't know it. I know who he is just because where he's coming from. So yeah, that's kind of interesting. Oh, that 
holds it much, much flatter than that bent up one did. All right, let's see how this goes. Get some choke, probably a neutral. Get a little bit of gas somewhere. Okay, update. This piece of junk will run. If you go half throttle, well, you go full throttle and back a little bit. You can't see what I'm doing, but. And then choke. Give it four to five pulls. Push in choke. And then give it two to three more pulls. It'll fire up. Now you're revving pretty high. If you try to lower it, it's gonna die. Try to raise the throttle, it's gonna die. It's almost like it'll draw fuel if the throttle is open fully, choke closed, so we get fuel into the intake here, it'll start. But once you need more fuel, it'll die. Or less fuel, it'll die. So it, oh, and it'll only run for a few seconds. So I put on this coil, and I was like, okay, maybe the ignition coil is getting hot and dying. No, it's not, it's sparking. So you say maybe the carburetor settings are bad. Yeah, that needle helped. Like if I, I le made it rich as can be, it helped a lot. That's what made it actually kind of start. It's, it just doesn't draw fuel. It is, it's a piece of junk. We're going to find out why. It could be intake manifold gaskets leaking. Could be leaking out of here. I already replaced this hose thinking that could be it, but nope. It just doesn't draw fuel. Good compression, clean cylinder walls, doesn't draw fuel. Now, we have this piece of junk that was robbed for parts. It was robbed when I got it, and then I robbed it some more. What's wrong with it? Don't know. Why was it robbed for parts? Don't know. Uh, probably better than the one we tried to fix, though. So we're going to take everything off of this pile of junk and put it onto that one and see what happens. All right, new outboard is installed onto the outboard. So, I have some pretty good uh, feelings for this one. When you spin the flywheel, you instantly hear sucking through the carburetor. So I think this one's going to be fine. We will see, though. All right, I got some guzzoline into it. Primer is nice and hard, and no fuel leaks. So we're on to a good start. All right, some carburetor adjusting, and it seems to be running okay. I need to adjust the throttle stop down there. Because I can't go too slow. It's, uh, it's a little off. Otherwise, it seems like it's running okay. It's vibrating about normal. You can see the handle. All right, it's been sitting for a bit, so let's see. Well, we've established that this power head is essentially worthless. So I'm gonna rip it apart and see if we can see anything obvious with it. Figured I would show you this nut. We got a timing belt here, which we can't easily slide off. Now you can if you pry the belt up. But, you know, you ain't supposed to. You're supposed to use this special tool, 342212. It is tapered with a keyway groove which locks onto there so you can get a huge wrench on this nut and hold this one over here and try to get that nut off. Yeah, it's pretty tight. And we can remove the belt. I noticed in one of my other videos somebody said that you can't replace this belt. Well, you can. You can still buy new ones. You're not getting them at the Evner dealer, but you can hop on eBay and buy them.
So yeah, they're out there. They're available. Brand new. That was kind of a concern on mine when I saw they weren't available. Like, well, you're supposed to replace them every year. This one is 20 years old or so, 24, 25. So yeah, it's time. It's still in good shape, but definitely time. Can't find bolts long enough to go in there and pull that gear off. So since I don't care, it is staying on there. Let's pull the cylinder head off and see if we see anything obvious. All right, cylinder head is off, nothing weird. I have one oily, watery, milky bolt out of this top corner. All the rest of them will clean and fine. So perhaps the head gasket, typical carbon buildup. Nothing I would say is unusual. Gasket. Don't notice anything right off the bat. Don't see any cracks in the gasket. No crack between the cylinders, outer cylinders. Oh, you can see why they vibrate now too. If you notice both those pistons are matched. <laughs> see what I mean? They they move together, so there's no there's no balancing there. Now I'm sure the crankshaft is weighted balanced but you still have two moving items equally going back and forth you know instead of anyway yeah causes your vibration at least that's the theory very very clean inside this stuff looks good as far as the reason why it didn't work, I got no, I got no idea. I mean, keep in mind it could be a cracked intake manifold, bad gaskets, could have been anything. But right off the bat, I don't really see any damage. But hey, let's keep going. So what I'm noticing now versus other outboards, notice no bearings here. Just a nice, smooth, clean surface. You know, on every other outboard that we've seen on this channel, we have bearings there. You know, little needle bearings. You know, NASCAR type stuff as the most automotive people see it as. Or we see it as just outboard stuff. So it can't... I don't know, it's, it doesn't really have the RPM range, I think, that the uh, needle bearings do. Now these are obviously fine, they obviously work, but will they work and last as long as your, you know, crankshaft that has roller bearings? I don't know. Like here, no bearings, it's just press fit and oil, of course. Well, machine fit and oil. Typical push method ain't working. Now... Rings, well, at least top of the rings look fine. Bottom one ain't stuck or broken or missing. Looks like a weak little baby piston though, huh? But that's a, that's a four stroke piston. Just not something we're used to see. Bottom looks the same. Yeah, a little bit of a little bit of light scoring, I suppose, but. Nothing you can even see in the camera. And yeah, cylinder walls. They look fine. So what happened to this thing? I don't know. I thought for sure we'd be able to take it apart and see a cracked cylinder head. Now I can put a straight edge on the cylinder head and we can see if it's warped or something, but it doesn't matter. Now, right now you may be thinking, oh, it's the oil pressure switch. 
Oh, it's the carb adjustment. Oh, it's that needle on top. Oh, it's the stator. Oh, it's the ignition module. Oh, it's the coil. Let me know what you think. I, I, I am curious, but you, you should know that I did check everything before I made a decision to rip that one apart and put the other one, rip this one apart to put the other one back together. I, I couldn't figure out. It just would not draw fuel. Why? No idea. Like one of the first things I checked was the intake manifold. Seemed fine. You know, I didn't have any cracks or anything on it. You know, I was expecting this to be all warped. Nope. I put new O-rings on when the other intake manifold went on and it was, it was the same situation. I don't know what it was. Before I go, I would like to take a moment and thank Charjoy for their desk lamp they sent me. If you're interested in one, I'll put the link below. I look forward to being able to use it to shine a little bit, a little bit more light on what we're doing. All right, see you later.